Hello, this video is what I think about Austria. As I left Austria yesterday, I was there like a week and a half or something. Um, I traveled from Liechtenstein, or let's call it Liechtenstein, through the mountains to Vienna. I was in Vienna three full days, letting my knee heal and checking it out because my great grandfather, my mother's mother's father's from Vienna. He was in the Vienna Voice Choir, which I had the opportunity to see. I was there on a Sunday, but I couldn't get up in the time. <laughs> But, um, Austria, they're very friendly people, and they're very, very trusting people. Uh, and the first night I was in Austria, I stayed at a, a hotel, at a camping place that was really expensive, by the way. It was 17 euro. Uh, but I got internet. I could hang out, and the guy's like, yeah, but we close at 11. Um... You know, so do you have a lot of internet? And I was like, well, yeah, because their internet wasn't really that fast. I was up trying to upload videos and it was taking forever. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I'll just leave you in here and you can close the door when you leave. And so he left me in there, like in the lounge area that was the same room as like the bar and the reception and all this stuff. And I thought that was pretty trusting. Um, um, and then, um, and what else? Oh, and one time I went to a restaurant and I forgot to pay. And I got to my campsite, which was right, right in the town of, um, of, um, I can't remember, but it's a big ski town in Western Australia. And I go, oh shit, I didn't pay. So I go back there and the guy's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, yeah, dude, I forgot to pay. And he's like, oh shit, you did? Oh, what did you get then? <laughs> um, and, um, and, um, what else? There are a bunch of other instances like that, too. Um, but I can't remember them, so I guess they're not that important. But, <clears throat> their English is crap in Austria. And I knew it would be. Because, like, I mean, even though Austria, and it's not like a totally small country, I don't know how many people are there, but... You know, and even though they have money and everything, they don't travel, like, in all my years of traveling, I met, like, hundreds and hundreds of Germans, you know, and people from London and stuff, and Vancouverians, and from a bunch of other countries, but I met one Austrian. So I knew Austria would be kind of weird, kind of, like, insular, like, really insular, and, yeah, so I wasn't surprised when, it's like, it seems like, Seems like 70 or 80 percent, like 70, 60, 70 percent of Germans can speak English, but it's like 10 percent of the Austrians can. In the cities, most of the Austrians can, but if you're out in the countryside, you pretty much basically, if you're not in a tourist, like a um, campsite or something, you pretty much know that none of them are going to be speaking English. And, um, which is weird because, you know, they're a developed country and everything, but. And, um,. The country itself, the western side of it, is um, it's very mountainy. It's like, you know, the same mountains that are in Switzerland, and only more so than what I found. Kind of like southeastern Switzerland, like big mountains. And I went up a valley. On either side, you had these big mountains. And the valley went on forever. And I, everywhere I looked, there was ski lifts. And then I looked on the map that I had, that the Swiss guy gave me. And yeah, there were ski lifts everywhere. But the weird thing was, there weren't ski runs. It was just ski lifts. So I guess they build the ski lifts, and then they're just like, I guess they want the challenge to get ski down through the trees or something. I mean, I did see some ski runs, like some place called, I can't remember what it's called, but it had a bunch of ski runs and stuff in these other places. But Um... It was really rainy though, like it, it rained on the first day I was there, the first night I was there, and then the first full day of riding I was there, it rained, and it rained like, I was in Vienna three full days, and it rained the second two. It's like about to rain now, it seems like, there's lots of, lots of clouds, and I'm, I'm just inside of um, Czech Republic. Um, and then it rained hard my first day riding out of Vienna, and it rained all night, and then it was... It rained really hard yesterday for a little bit, like really hard, so. But, um, 
Austrians kind of, I think they're a lot, they're friendlier in the Eastern Austria than Western Austria. Western Austria, they seem kind of, kind of like how would you, you would imagine a German to act. Um, I don't know, they were just like, I guess I'm asking some question, I'd be like, yeah. And um, they have the tone of voice like Frau from, um, from Austin Powers, like, you know, everybody thinks Frau is German, but Frau is actually Austrian. <laughs> like, nah, nah, nah. like I, I heard this one Austrian say something to some other lady, and she was talking like that in that tone of voice, like, nah, 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 like, like Frau, and but she had a smile on her face and everything. So it's just something about the accent or something. But, um, but um, Vienna was a very pretty town. Um. It's very big. I guess it's the big, tenth biggest in Europe. Uh, and they had a palace there and palace grounds there that was just huge. I mean, it could be the biggest in the world. I'm gonna Wikipedia and see what the deal is. It's huge, man. They must have had a, the Habsburg dynasty, I guess. They, they must have been powerful back then. Or they spent a lot of money decorating. And Vienna has uh, statues all over the place, too like everywhere and I guess in the Wikipedia article it says Vienna is like the best city like mixing the past and the new the present and um, yeah it seems I mean you have like horse-drawn carriages for the tourists all over the place um, lots of really old buildings you know I guess because Vienna maybe didn't get bombed to rubble like a lot of cities in Germany did so it's kind of like more you know um, Conserves that more, um, and yeah, because there were like old churches all over the place, and buildings, and like old, you know, colonial-looking everywhere, and and they had a big uh, Gothic cathedral too. It wasn't bigger than, it wasn't as big as the one in Cologne. The one in Cologne is the biggest Gothic cathedral in the world. And it was actually the highest building structure in the world for four years from 1880 to 1884, but. Uh, the one in Cologne was big too, um, and they, yeah, and they had like lots of interesting like buildings around there. So, um, but it's really expensive, Austria. Um, I, I went into Czech Republic yesterday and I got a meal and I was like, whoa, awesome! It was cheap when the guy gave me the bill. It was only six euro for this huge plate of food, and like in Austria, I spent t like twelve euro, which is like eighteen bucks. Um, I'm like a baguette, cheese, an apple, fried apricots, and the apricots themselves were like five bucks, and a yogurt and two fruit juices, and that's all I got, you know, and like a meal, a simple meal would be like ten, yeah, like that morning I had a simple meal that was like ten euro, and all I had was a little piece of chicken, I mean a little piece of fish, and some french fries, so... Um, yeah, Austria is expensive. Um, and, um, yeah, so that's that. <clears throat> but I like Austria. Austrians are really nice people. Um, oh, yeah, and like another t example of how they're trusting is I told one lady at the campsite, I was like, I don't have any soap. Is there a place I can buy soap? Because I kept leaving my soap around. And she's like, oh, here's a bar of soap. Just leave it on the sill in the morning. So I thought that was cool. Because soap in Austria is like four euro. It's not cheap. So, anyways, yes, I like Austria. Okay. Where's the sensor? How come this isn't working?